Then mm-hmm. you know all those, and then Bagar was able to get those power minions. But you know, was his boombots hitting the right targets and not killing things? Like all these different small differences were just crazy back and forth. Uh, looks like we're just gonna hop in, by the way, onto another feature table here between Bors and Born to Win. These are two players who are also uh, on seven the one. Seven uh, one. Seven one. Th- this Very is why we're, uh, we are uh, showing them because it's the first time to th- they both actually are being broadcast. And it's cool to see the two new players in their faces with such a high result. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Bond to win actually enters a lot of online tournaments. Seen a lot of like you know the weekly online uh, cups and stuff. So mm-hmm. I've seen him uh, knocking about. But That's and right. I just wanted him to top deck Reno. Then. Yeah, he's this, playing like, the this Reno. Doesn't like Reno a lot, right? It is with the Stalag yeah. and the Fugin combination. Almost certainly with it. He's got time to stall because the heal bot heals him to 15. Or I guess in this case, 13. He can... Uh, oh, Earth Ring Far as well. yeah. So. Uh, one fun fact is that Boss is... Uh, I didn't have actually time to talk with him yet, but I know that he is one of the top players from World of Warcraft TCG from actually my times. And uh, I can just can't, you know, uh, fix the name to the, to the face. <laughs> so I have to talk to, with him uh, after the game. I suppose the volume of people you meet at mo- so many events oh, yeah. is going to be tough, right? Yeah. But Draxus is a pretty important draw, actually. Yeah, Draxus heals, but I think the more important thing is the Farseer putting your, putting yourself out of yeah. Force Nation Savage War. But then I thought about it and I thought, he has a Vitality oh, Totem, which is an extra two damage. So, you know, he's not actually out of the Force of Nature Savage yeah. War range. You don't really think of Vitality Totem as like a minion that's a threat, but it's, it's still a minion, right? It's still, it's a, still minion a minion that can get plus two attack from Savage Roar. Not to mention that the Force of Nature has also been reduced by one mana, therefore you can squeeze into hero power even if you didn't have Innervate. Yep. Wow, looks like uh, Born to Win. Getting Everyone. a little snack. What's with check, check what players and exactly bananas? Exactly what I wanted to say. <laughs> Another check player eating bananas on stream. <laughs> yeah, during the match. And like, and I, I, I don't know, and, no and really freaking good at Hearthstone. It's not actually <laughs> fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, Twisting Nether being picked up. Not really the card that's playable Farseer. now. Yeah, I think this just has to be double trade into Emperor and Farsi, right? Because it means Eudraxus can be uh, with played hero with power. hero power, yeah. which is really important to actually come back into this game. Because Odri can't deal with a 6-6 six, six every single turn. Mm-hmm. That's too much, just too much. What's funny is that you still die, even if you Eudraxus to a combo because, because you, innervate he has well, yeah. well even if you didn't have innervate force yeah. nature's at five yeah, okay. so but when you've only got those cards in hand there's only really the one play right it's true the c- would, could you really risk leaving low up on 12 health oh, it's true oh wow wow okay. so he is alive barely he's got 12 12 damage right now so any three damage source would end it Ooh. No! What? That's, that's <laughs> terrible! Oh, poor Bors. That's the worst draw in the deck right now. Yeah, it actually couldn't get any worse than that. Because the innervates are just dead. Although... That's what you get for playing Paladin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Druid. Druid Yeah, and Paladin. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, he has Paladin in his lineup, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, it, it fits. He deserves it fits. this. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Lothar. Met what you He's said. playing Paladin and Druid. Well, the good thing that is in Camp Boris is that he does have time. He has a 31 health, so... But he's know. piling on pretty fast, and but he still has outs with the Savage Roar. And the thing here is, as well, for Born to win, this turn is going to be a huge indicator that he probably has double Innovate, because how could you hold three cards and not really play any in the turn as true? It's like, yeah. what other cards could Even you have that you don't play? Yeah, anything. Um, like any minion would be maybe played as well, like right? one force of nature <laughs> living roots and living played. roots. Yeah. But now it's time for Jaraxxus and a hero power. And you know what? That sets up potential lethal for the following turn as well. Very strong moves here from Born to Win. And looks like he is going to follow the path of Sivka because I know he loves this deck too, the Reno Warlock. So Let's it's 18 damage on board, 19 health remaining. Belcher it's that saves him for one turn. Draw. No, with silence? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, There's but he's, he doesn't have lethal, though. He's at 18. 22. Oh, he's one off, right? Yeah. He's at 18, and. I mean, he may be able to draw something. 
Yeah, that's the thing though. That's like the opposite side of these Reno decks. Uh -oh. that, that there's a lot of, of uh, selection and choice, but like you play one Argus, right? So like the odds on drawing the Argus for lethal is tough, and then like what one of each spell is going to definitely be difficult to try and uh, try and weigh up your odds of drawing lethal. Mm -hmm. This looks like a disconnect. What? I don't know whether it will be a difficult um, difficult situation to judge because that's six. That's Wait, is it lethal off board? No, it's actually 18. Yeah, it's one off, right? Why? So it's 11. So it's 15. So it's 17, 18. Yeah, it's and 15 on, on board in minions and then 3 for oh minions. Oh, yeah, right. And so plus he has a, a Sludge Belcher with hero power this turn. Yeah, so it's two off because like the yeah. Sludge Belcher will get silenced. Yeah, well, but he's he, at, he has he's the hero power, off. yeah. And he always has the possibility of drawing Savitor. Well, that's... Wait, wait. Next card is Shredder. Oh, the Well, I don't know what really to say. Uh, I think that is always a possibility of Druid drawing for lethal. Mm -hmm. With um, the Savage Roar. Yep. And with Warlock, we even saw the next card, which was Pilot Shredder. <laughs> it's like Too bad we didn't saw the next card for the Druid. Uh, Maybe if we stuck on it. But uh, it wouldn't. Uh, it would. Oh, yeah. You, would you yeah. view the draw? If you DC'd, you wouldn't have viewed the draw, would you? I don't think so. No, no but we see it. See it. I mean, it's... it's uh, that's hard to it's hard to rule, because if if let's leave that to the admins. If he drew like some kind of taunt minion, like say he drew a sludge belcher or like mm -hmm. sun fury, then it's like yeah, then he just wins. It yeah. doesn't really can't do anything. But pilot shredder is still a little ambiguous. Yeah, and I think as well like because we couldn't see some of the other cards that have played mm -hmm. earlier, it's really it's even harder to make a judgment call. And that far into a game, like when it's like literally either sure. one could draw one card and win. This it's is kind of um, tough. I think this is especially hard as well because I think Reno Warlock is like one of its worst matchups is Druid. So beating this was, I mean, not only is it winning the series, but that's mm -hmm. also like especially painful loss um, for Born to Win. So I think uh, I think we'll figure out what's happening. In the meantime, um, this is just kind of what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, maybe we have already yeah, used someone we here can't, for we an can't interview. That'll be nice. Yeah, maybe we can uh, interview somebody. Maybe we can stall for time. Right. Anyway. Uh, we can talk about what we'll be doing afterwards, after yeah, this, sure. uh, this round. So uh, after this round, we're going to have a round of 16 group draw. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to do that live on stream, but we're just going to have all the 16 players uh, bracketed and just doing the playoffs from that point on, which is really fun. Because um, the cutoff for Swiss is here. We have some players who are 7-2 and some players who are 8-1, and I think we might even have a player that's 9-0. Uh, we'll no, no, know. no. Hoi lost against... Oh, did Hoi lose? Yeah. They're going to replay gonna the game. Wow. Okay, so they're going to replay the game. Well, uh, it was kind of a situation when no one was favored to win. I mean, okay, Warlock was Warlock favorite, was dramatically favored yeah. to win. But I would say that his chance to win was over 80%. I think well, I think I think the issue is when Un unless unless he read, he had two savage drawers left. Yeah, I was going to say it depends on what was left in the decks, but also when both players could top deck and win, it's really difficult. To, yeah. to call because there's the advantage on board which is fine but if there's two or even one savage draw because there wasn't a lot of cards left by that point right mm -hmm. so and he might have also uh w he had an innervate two innervates. two mana two innervates so yeah. even I let's imagine he would draw druid of the claw and then he has four eleven no, twelve that wouldn't change yeah it wouldn't be enough it. it would literally be savage draw i think to, to win it is, and if he's what like twenty cards in? No, it's probably like seventeen, like sixteen, seventeen cards in. Yeah. Oh well, uh, that's just how it is. They're gonna just regame. So I guess we were originally gonna think about going to a break, but I think we're just going to hop directly back in and see. Uh, yeah, and I think after this match as well, Nimsh is going to come on and give it like an overview of the actual finishes, right? Yeah, yeah. Nimsh has been actually walking around and talking to the players. He 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 digs this stuff, man, because <laughs> it goes back to his roots. And Nymph just like always comes walking around. It's like, oh man, I'm just so excited. <laughs> just like, just keeps talking to me. And it's like, Frodan, what does it mean <laughs> to be exactly. here at DreamHack? Oh man, I love it. It's like, oh yeah. So that's, uh, he's just so hyped. <laughs> yeah, good I love, good I love impression Nymph. as always, Frodan. <laughs> next up, you've not done Lothar yet, right? I, so I, I can't. Next cast. He has a very smooth, <laughs> sultry voice. I can't copy that. Uh, oh wait, Nymph is right yeah. here. He's. Uh, <laughs> Why, why don't you come on and just talk about some of the Swiss results right after I mocked you behind your back? <laughs> He'll rewatch the stream later. <laughs> he will. For sure. 
All right, hey guys. Um, I was not prepared to come here, but this this energy is just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a meme. No, like, God, dude. I was like, I was just walking around <laughs> taking photos of the winners, and everybody is so hyped when they when they have seven two. So I don't remember. I, I don't remember with whom I start. Oh, I remember. So I'm I'm actually standing there and talking, and then one guy just like, jumps out of the turn. Like he's basically just jumping because he's super happy, and I approach him as like. Hey man, what happened? He's like, I think I made it. I'm seven two. I'm like, okay, but what, what's your nickname? Because I haven't seen him before. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, who are you? <laughs> who, are, who are you? He's the one who doesn't make out. His name the is seven Dragon two. Albert, and he's probably Dragon in. Albert. Dragon Albert. Oh, he just played. Um, oh, who was he playing? I think he had a pretty big match actually. He was playing one. Dragon John. And the dragon won. But wait, wait there was what? No, no, no. He's Seriously? not oh, Dragon John. Oh, oh, dragon, dragon, dragon Albert actually made it. Wait, I don't, I don't. Is that some inside joke? Who, who's Dragon John? John? Let's, let's drop that joke. one. Let's drop that one. That was oh, a bad okay. joke. <laughs> I don't know. I'm learning about new players. All right, let's let's it. move on. Let's move okay. on. So we had AK Wonder win versus Sol. So Sol eliminated. AK Aww. Wonder was like, yeah, I, I made it. Uh, obviously, you guys casted RDU, who's already complaining on Twitter. It's like, oh man, I could have played better with my Druid. Yeah. I haven't seen the, the game, but RDU is. But you can upset. see an improvement. He's not complaining about his opponent's draws. He's complaining <laughs> about his decisions. He can't. He won. <laughs> How do you complain about your opponent's draws when you win? Well, you know. It's RDU. <laughs> he can complain about <laughs> everything. No, I'm just saying, like, I think uh, it's very nice that he was talking about, like, how he's, he wants to improve. He wants to be a better player. We mm -hmm. had Kranich win as well. Kranich was playing versus Fiali. Fiali uh, was in the final of Gefinity in the final of DreamHack yep. Kuznapoka. Uh, Kranich actually eliminated him from the tournament. Um, who else? Like, we had a lot of players just uh, playing those final matches and going through. A lot of 7-2s, uh, they, they have their fingers crossed that will actually get in because one player is not making it. So... There was a lot of good stuff You're happening, so and uh, I was talking to some players as well, and they I were super happy about the tournament, how it's, how it's going. All right, well, thanks very much, Nimsh. Looks like the game's about to start, and with that, this is most likely the last games for round nine here. After we're finished, once again, we're going to draw the top 16, and don't go anywhere, guys. After we finish round nine, we're going to play out the round of 16 today. Yep, we'll have four matches, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. for the round of 16. Four out of the eight matches. And uh, we're just going to queue them up simultaneously. Yep. I guess it will be a lot of matches. And all of those will be decided because it's single elimination. And the match is really important because not only it gives mm, the prize money uh, for being the debate, but it also gives the first points for the 2016 World Championships. Yeah, it's true. And those points will matter more as time goes on. Look at this start, though, for Druid. That's what you want. Wild growth into the Shredder. Into Innervate. Yep. Whatever. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay. Yeah. That's that also works. a thing, right? That is a thing. Um, I'm trying to look for the answer on the other side. Does is, that, there is that is. Fugan Game in Hunter. hand? Is that one Fugan? I always get confused. With uh, Fugan that's Fugan. I yeah. think that is. Stalag is the guy with the right hand. It looks like he's about what? to punch you. Fugan's like the guy that's like taking a dump. <laughs> oh, so, right. I'll have to remember that's, yeah, yeah, that's how, you, how you work it out. Also, I remember Fugan is the one that's four attack because Fugan begins with F and four begins with F. You've got all these and tricks And St Stalag begins with S and seven begins with S. So nice. uh, Fugan Stalag is Fugan, so four, seven. Stalag is seven, four. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm, a, I'm a nerd, man. Can I, I'm, just, I'm, a, I'm not ashamed. I think we all are. The, the fact that we're sat here. <laughs> Um, what do you think about the, the Sludge Belcher instead of the Innovating Out Dr. Boo? That is certainly interesting. But is I, he playing I around Mind Control Tech? I think it's, well, that, first of all, that's hilarious. The second <laughs> is that um, I think it's just easy for your opponent to answer Boom if you just attack with like the 4 3 and like Dark Bomb. And then the Boom bots actually get him closer to Molten Giants without actually yep. threatening real size minions. And I think it's important that she does have Molten Giant in hand because it's one of the cards in Reno Lock, or in or a lot of versions of Reno Lock, that you run too well. It's like pretty sure. much the only card you run too well, right? Yeah, makes sense. But the thing I do like about Dr. Boom is he had Savage War in hand, and that could have been a game. lot of damage. <laughs> no, it could have been just a straight up game if he didn't yep. have a response to it. Even now, Savage Roar is just 6 damage to the face, like a fireball. 6, uh, 7, 13, swipe is 17, hero power is 18. Dr. Boom on turn 6, I mean on turn 5, because that was wild girl. And he still has the Innovate for if he draws into the uh, Force of Nature next turn. Oh, oh, Catapult was fired off. 
That just plus two damage to the face. Mm -hmm. All right, so attacks all around. And that there is a Shadow Flame available. Let's see what the Mind Control Tech steals, though. That's always going to be fun. Wait, is he going to use Mind Control Tech? He only has six mana available. He might even just opt for Siphon Soul, perhaps? I can't see what the far left card is. Far left is Demon Rat. Yeah, Demon Rat. Demon Rat. All right. By the way, I just had this cool so idea for a brawl. What if you can click the environment to affect the board? That sounds that be a lot not of fun at all. <laughs> APM would be it does involved. Sound <laughs> it does sound interactive, though. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> you just have like one trigger per turn, and you have four different areas of effect with like, random cards. You know what I would like? It'd be like if you... Engaging seven, seven. Oh, oh, that's okay. Yeah, that, that'll work. That's pretty good. Would you Demon Wrath now? No, you probably just end up killing the boom. Kill the boom with... Uh, why not just pile the shredder and leave the boom around? I don't, I don't trust the 7-3, man. You have Shadow Flame next time. Yeah. This this I can definitely get behind. Play the cards here makes more sense. Okay. I think with Druid and the type of hand he's had, it's just too explosive. Cause look, he had Savage Order force in the, uh, Savage Order and Swipe this turn. That would have yeah. been crazy strong. Even with Wrath as well with the innovate. Yeah. To actually just you know get like help get the belt out of the way. Four, I'm just counting the max damage right now. He has four, six, plus eight. That's um, 14, 14 plus hero power. So he, he's a couple of damage points short here. If in fact, if the boom bot hit for four to the face, no, he would he'd still be a couple points short because the boom bots can't attack anymore. So I suppose he's just going instead to uh, start playing cleanup here. But that gives initiative to the Reno Lock player. Yeah, I mean, he does have an option, although it doesn't look great to actually innovate out the Shredder, depending on where this Boombot goes. But yeah, now that that's not, not too good, because ev nearly everything's about. He got greedy. He wanted this to hit base. And now, Shredder just trades normally. And that Boombot, oh man, that, that Boombot is regretting life, man. Dropped out of college, couldn't find a job, just died. As a pitiful one damn thing. Didn't, didn't, didn't even go out with the bank. Didn't live out to its potential at all. All right, well, that is a soul fire to potentially reveal. So I think what he ends up wanting to do here is just to find a way to play around Force Nature Savage Rogue. But at 15 health, that's almost too perfect here. And his opponent just swiped. So I'm feeling like maybe Implosion is actually a case to be made here. Usually you want to play Implosion after your opponent plays Swipe, so yep. it creates board control, which is very important that it Wow, even to the point where Border Wind doesn't even want to give up any of his minions. He rolls a 4 on Implosion! I like this though, because like you said, the Swipe's just gone, so even removing the 2 or 3 2s is difficult. Next turn... Wait, if you actually... If you actually not play a minion right now, if his opponent has to sh uh, siphon some of his own minion to be out of range of combo with Innervate Hero Power, it's a little too obvious, though, if you just hero power face. <laughs> he might, like, mortal, he might mortal call the minion, and then he'll bot. Like, it's, yeah. it's a little bit too you obvious. You get punished pretty hard. Like, he has Demon Wrath to even kill his own minions. Like, that's how desperate he can be. Oh, BGH is going to be pretty nice for that Molten Giant, actually. Yeah, it's really big, in fact. That Because the Molten Giant might lock him out if he didn't have that BGH. Demon Wrath like won't even done. kill his imps. <laughs> yeah, I like really like how Boss played this. And kept the innervate. Hmm. But this is the turn when you have to use Siphon Soul, I guess. It depends. If you. Like, say, actually, if you Sylvana Shadow Flame, you steal the last minion that comes out. But I guess that's and a really weak the use the of spells. The thing is, as well, like, how often do you actually uh, play around Innervate Hero Power on top of combo? Okay, that was a good top deck. Yes, on <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I mean, Excellent he, he, draw. Unless, unless he plays giant in some kind of Well, I thought he was going to siphon anyways. Wait, he goes for siphon. Okay. Okay. Pretty average result here. And then just trade down. Attack once again. Slowly but surely, picking away. That mind control tech, by the way, such a big game changer. 
Second bullet. Holy sure. snaps! That's a lot of damage. You know what he can do? He can big game hunter innervate combo <laughs> if it gets to the point where it's actually enough damage. So if he like forcing nature's face here, like say he kills a three two and like goes face with everything else and just hero powers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually a problem. If I don't know, giant man. That's kind of reasonable. It's a problem if you molten giant taunt, right? Because that just no, no. You big game it. hunter and then innervate combo. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's a problem for, oh, for oh, the wall. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because that looks like the obvious play, but then with BGH just ruined it. Like taunting up Savannah would be better. Well, I was thinking about playing big game hunter just you know as a tempo card. Nah, dude. This is you go for the, the sex, the sexy play, man. Every single time. Huh. Mm. I guess I'm doing it wrong. Mm. Mm. He definitely needs to hit at least one to the face. Or oh, sorry, yeah, one to the face because then, or maybe even one. both. Oh. But there's not, you've seen Farsi, you've seen Psychic Soul. Yeah. So there's only what, Draxus that would push you out, but you've got Innovate for the extra one. I guess he realizes that if that gets taunted up, that he needs to go through it anyways. Yeah. And damage to the face means even cheaper Moltens, and he might even play two Moltens, which could I be the still no well, he goes for that Zoe. Wait, wait, wait. no, no, he's got it, Shields right? Yeah, yeah, he can BGH, yeah. use his own hero power to get through. That is the second savage where he doesn't need it. BGH is still bad, right? Right, you have 22 damage from uh, savage. No, he actually does does need to because the the thing with double savage wars six attacks are quick. Six with the attacks giant, can right? actually go through the giant. You individually. use hero power to kill. But you, f uh, you, f you hit your sort of face attack would normally go yeah. to the 4 too, right? Yeah, yeah, you force nature, you savage roar, then you innervate <laughs> and you BGH, weaving the my greetings, and that's how you end this game. Wow. Boom! And this was this might actually feel really bad for Bond to win, because this has come off the back of a remake game that he probably at that point felt was very comfortable in. Wow. Yeah, that's true. So that's actually going to, if there's ever that's something that will throw you off your next match, which is the last match, it's going to be something like that. And he has his Paladin versus the Druid. How do you play around that specifically if you're born to win? That's, that's something that you can't account for. I saw that he was thinking about taunting up his Savannas, yeah. and it actually would play around it. Did he have mana to do that? I don't think so. No, 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 so. he was not just... Dub, not double taunt, but just Sylvanas. Because just then Sylvanas. you can't kill it without stealing one of the four twos, right? Exactly. Because that was... It's also very cool to play just around the, mm. the combo because it steals a lot of damage, actually. It absorbs damage and it steals damage. Yes. Well, now we go into a Paladin versus Druid to wrap up round number nine. And these games are really close. You can tell, but it's definitely within the fate of these players. It, it's not out of the question of yep. whether or not these guys can win these games. And mulliganing all four cards, turn two as Paladin, is not great. That's definitely, uh, sorry, going second as Paladin is really not great. And he still comes back with cards that he doesn't want. Mm, the card hammer is not bad, especially if it... He even has no minions uh, early on, though. Yes, uh, but he has always the hero power, right? And even with just the card hammer, because the user one might ignore just the 2-2, uh, two, two, uh, the 1-1, yeah, one one, he, yeah. he, he might get some value here. Wow. And that's some ramp. Hmm. Yeah, the ramp oh. here is going to be really important because the Darnassus Aspirant doesn't get answered generally very easily unless you have a one, one, um, one mana minion followed by a two mana minion to answer it. Yeah, and of all the secrets, Competitive Spirit is not the one you want to draw early on, um, especially without Muster. Yeah, oh. but at the same time, Noble Sacrifice isn't good to play if you're on the coin because if they happen to not have a Wild Growth or Darn Assassin, they'll heal her power. Yeah, just tear her back down. So Compass Spirit is the best for the mind games as well as for the value. Why was it Wild Growth instead of Darn Assassin? Well, the benefit, obviously, is that you get the ramp guaranteed. What turn two play could he make though? That's the thing. There's no turn two play that would kill the aspirant. Actually. Exactly. Well, now the aspirant gets contested. Because now, yeah. This is why I'm like feeling that that mass is just way too slow right now. Well, yeah, and also if this is like redemption or something, then the dynasties would die to a lot of things like cog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blessing of Kings. It just happened to so work out that way. I suppose at this point now, like, I suppose he can still just play whatever he draws next turn. Sure. Which, is, which isn't a bad position for his team. Now Boss knows that this is not a redemption, so we can use Keeper's Silence and kill the... Hmm. Kill the... Uh, 
kill the Palter Shadow. Or you can Is innervate it? Boom. Innervate you think innervate Boom is just worthwhile? Because you're getting so far ahead and it's coming up to. Uh, what mana is. Is, uh, on to, is Bonswing going to be on six? Turn four. My god, the oh. disproportion in mana is just. Yeah, you just innervate Boom, right? Jeez. You innervate because, Boom. Because be next turn yeah. you can play Druid of the Claw regardless. In next turn you can innervate Keeper and Druid. But Ball seems to be reluctant to play Where like out I of the field, which is really interesting because he's being druid. So, hmm. what's worse is the innovates are sort of getting worse as the game goes on as well with, yeah. with his current hand. Because yeah, you know, like yeah. double innovating out co double exactly. combos, insane. He doesn't have double combos, so and he doesn't have a card draw either. So if yeah. it if it's not drawing into a engine of law next to just take advantage yeah. of those yeah, innovates. Then what, what are you doing with the innovates, right? They might be just zero mana and useless cards. One of the weird things as well is like, what did he think the Paladin was going to have as an answer to Boom mm. with four mana? One big hunter, but it's like... Yeah. But who, who runs it, right? In Secret Paladin. It's, just, it's so not common that you just don't play with it. And this, now this is just like a really awkward situation because it's really important against Secret Paladin to have multiple minions oh on board to proc... God to proc the uh, the secrets how you want to do it instead of being forced into like a sort of singular direction. Yeah, but he can follow... Uh, but th that's not enough mana to use Keeper, Boom, and Hero Power. It's two mana short. <laughs> By the way, that would be like a 13 mana I think play it might still be worth. On turn what? five. Yeah. You still want to silence the, the, the Shredder, right? I think, I think Boom innovate, innovate. I think it's the best because of the state of the board. And he's doing nothing else. You'd, you'd save... The keeper for Tyrion in this matchup, or a post blessing of kings, but I don't think you could have really yeah. want to afford to do that. And again, if he doesn't do it, these innovates are just getting so bad, just clogging up his hand. Yeah, so he's going to innovate here, or he might innovate hero power maybe, but that still does nothing. He yeah, he needs to silence the shredder. It's too much. Time but then the competitive oh, no spirit will also post the Butcher back to five four games. No, he played a noble sacrifice. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that. Because this is fine. Because now the uh, the aspirant just doesn't matter but for the uh, the effect the, it yeah, has. Yeah. It doesn't really change anything anymore. The blessing of kings allows you to kill boom, and all of a sudden druids spent their entire hand to develop their board. Do you think that's the correct play when your opponent just has only one card? When you can go for double, uh, double mini bots into noble sacrifice can clear the lesser minions. Yeah, I'm exactly afraid to take it. Personally speaking, then the only problem is it's the only way he's going to win because the druid's untouched at the moment. It's true. Although, although the druid's got no cards, which is definitely important. Like mm -hmm. the druid's one of the best mm -hmm. classes of top decking. I guess what this does do is make Blessing Kings much better as time goes on. And also the Mysterious Challenger has more minions on board, which is very effective. Yes. Yeah. So I, I do actually like that play now that I think about it. And Bors, I mean, he's got really weak plays this turn. He's going to play Shredder and Hero Power. Well, it's seven seven mana, maybe even six mana is the point where you're not too bothered about playing Wild Growth until it's card draw. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't accomplish enough. Unless you're about to, unless you can push into combo. There's just no point. You save it for the card draw. Floating three mana here is not what you want. Though. And take the Pontus Shredder, which is annoying. I mean, he, might kill, he might clear the board. Wow, okay. one damage boom bot. That sucks. Just play Shredder go face. Yep, that's pretty much it. And then Mysterious Challenger, but the Mysterious Challenger doesn't stop a boom attack again. Oh, well, the thing is, Druid has the advantage of its hero power. So, sort of deals with the uh, the mysterious challenger in the fact that you can use that and then d use your minions to actually deal with the outcome instead of using a minion to prop. Yeah. I think this is the turn when you have to blessing of kings because if you play mysterious challenger, you don't have a noble sacrifice to play around and oh, damage. Yeah, it's both the con right? yeah. yeah. Oh, that's actually huge. That, that's why I was really concerned about leaving Doom. He's gonna attack for so yeah, much damage. That's it's like he 14 damage is gonna be dealt. Oh my god, he just needs savage. Damage. Damage. Okay, wow. I, that was kind of awkward. Yeah. I was sure he would sacrifice the 2-2 because the 2-2 is not important. Ooh, and that's game. That, yeah, that's just game. That's, that's the series. Yeah, wow. Well, that was an anticlimactic finish. Yeah. Considering that I was anticipating Boom to die much earlier. But this is, again, the punish that we were talking about. That, um, you know, the fact is you, you can't really deal with Dr. Boom early on, which means that Druid's just going to do a lot of damage and they're just going to finish the game soon. And as Paladin, you actually need as much wiggle room as you can. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I guess the, the, th the problem with that Busting of Kings play in the beginning, though, was that 
uh, you give up almost your entire board yeah. to deal with it. So. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's tough call to make. Either way, Druid was able to get that wild growth into the ramp perfectly, so it worked out okay. It was, it was really important that the two noble sacrifice were gone in time for the challenger to hit, because that just changes the whole makeup of w the way the secrets interact. Yeah, I mean, you also get the hero power, so it kind of doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's just because it forces the hero power in. I know Druid's like the, the one of the better classes to deal with it, but because it just wasn't there, there was not even a question about it. The, the minions could eat fr uh, freely attack in, and even if you needed that one extra damage from the hero power. Yeah, okay. that's true. I guess we're going to talk with our winner, um, unless you just want to say hi <laughs> and then peace out. Hey, welcome Guys. to the table. So uh, with that win, you are 8-1. and one. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Nice That's awesome. Uh, thank you. So maybe you uh, introduce yourself because you're the first first time on the broadcast, right? So tell yeah, us something I'm about yourself. I am Boss, a player from uh, Germany. I am... Uh, didn't play many international tournaments so far, but I played some in Germany, uh, yeah, um, the ESL Pro League for Germany, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, made finals two times now there. No, oh, And uh, I guess I played uh, trading card games for about uh, 20 years now. Wow. Any notable okay. achievements in uh, you know the analog card games? Yeah, if you, but not in the very well-known uh, card mm -hmm. games. I played something like uh, Legend of the Five Rings, where I became German national champion, uh, top eight in European championships, and uh, I made top eight in the World of Warcraft trading card game in the uh, German national championships. Awesome. So some. Wow. Okay. So maybe you n met Ecop or some of those. Other yeah, I know Ecop from uh, years back. Ah, that's great. Small world. Well, um, how how long have you been playing Hearthstone for? Oh, since uh, I guess the first week of beta. Okay, from the very beginning. Uh, but but uh, then I made a typical break for about uh, 18 months or something mm -hmm. and uh, started. <laughs> that's <laughs> like a almost small break. the entire <laughs> small length break. of Hearthstone's lifespan. <laughs> that's the that's uh, lifespan of Hearthstone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, through the small break. Yeah. With the beginning of 2015, I started again then. Okay, wow. So uh, how how is. Uh, uh, how has your competition been in DreamHack so far? Has it been really hard for you, or do you feel like um, you know it's actually pretty simple because you've been preparing a lot, or what? Yeah, I really like it that it uh, feels like the old uh, traditional card games. You sit in front of your open and you can talk to them, and uh, it's with a great system and. Uh, I think uh, it uh, was good for me because I was used to know it and mm -hmm. uh, some people uh, didn't uh, knew that format and it was quite new to them how grueling the first day can be playing from 11 in the morning to midnight. Yeah, yeah. people are not used to that if they yeah. have no background in traditional uh, w traditional TCGs. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's definitely. true. All right. Uh, well, we don't want to take too much longer before the round of 16, um, but I don't know if you guys have any questions to ask. I'm no, I'm no, okay. I'm good. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you have any like final words you want to say before uh, we send you off? Ooh, I'm uh, pretty happy to be here, to be in the top 60 now, and um, I hope I can go some rounds more so I can talk again here with you guys. Sure, man. That'd awesome. be awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck in the future rounds. We'll see what happens. Uh, in the meantime, guys, we're going to get ready for the round 16, so we're going to draw the brackets and see who is matching up against whom and come back to report what matches will be on stream. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're watching DreamHack Winter 2015 Grand Prix.